Hi everyone, this is Lisa Espinosa, spiritual career coach, author, and host of the podcast Soul Studio for Your Career. I'm so happy to be here today with you for our monthly Facebook Live. Now, I've been doing a lot more Facebook Lives at once a month, but there is one Facebook Live once a month that is a little longer and just gives me time to share some special teachings with you, some inner journey, some activations, and then just share some upcoming things that are coming up. So before anything else, let's go ahead and open up our circle, tune in. So wherever you are, just taking some nice cleansing breaths. And just allow your breathing to bring you a sense of peace and relaxation and presence. Knowing that you are here for this time just to receive, to realign, to remember. And bringing the palms of our hands to our heart. I just welcome everybody's souls here. All of you who will be watching this live or who will watch the transmission, the recording. And I invoke a beautiful circle of light and healing and miracles and grace to surround everyone who is ever gonna watch this video. You know, whether you watch it, you know, today or five years from now, that you are all encircled in grace and blessings, especially for your career, especially for your life's purpose and the way that you share your unique medicine with the world. So we bring our hands into Namaste bow to each other and our own heart and we get ready to begin so today as i was preparing what i really wanted to talk about was self-compassion and i've talked about this before and but it's one of those things that doesn't get old <laughs> and doesn't at least i have not found that i've achieved this place of just total self-compassion i've done a lot of healing in that area but there's always more and specifically, the theme today is embracing self-compassion so that you can step into your role as a leader more powerfully. So again, again embracing self-compassion and stepping into your leadership role more powerfully. So why is self-compassion important? And, and actually, let me talk about what I mean by leadership. So when I talk about being a leader, I'm really referring to your ability, your commitment to stay connected with your soul, to stay aligned with your soul, to have an ongoing conversation with your soul every day throughout the day. Now, does this mean that you're sitting in meditation all day long? Absolutely not. No. I mean, my, I, you know, I'm a mother, I own a business, I have a lot of things going on in my life. My clients, same, you know, a lot of them are mothers or, you know, they just have busy lives. So it isn't about sitting in meditative pose 24-7, right? But it's this ongoing commitment to check in with your soul. And I've talked about how to do that before, right? I've talked about the interrupter rituals. I've talked about how do you... Um, stay with that connection so when i talk about leadership that's what i mean to be a divine leader is that you're you're stepping into this responsibility right this place of responsibility to yourself and to letting yourself be led from within and from that place once you check inside with yourself once you um, connect with your soul's guidance from that place, then you know how you are meant to share your medicine with others. And when you're in leadership, you're also, you're willing to be seen. So that's what I mean now. So wherever you are in your career and the work that you do, whether you're on Facebook Live and doing Zoom offerings like many people are doing, or whether you're, um, you know, seeing clients or students privately, wherever you are, your soul is guiding you into more leadership always because the world needs um 
healing. And in truth, everyone is meant to be a leader, right? When, when everybody says yes to that call, the world will evolve and ascend and there will be so much grace. So as you continue to say yes to that call to be a leader, self-compassion becomes more and more important. So self-compassion is a quality from your soul of the divine, is something that it seems like we have to learn how to do it, but in reality, it is innate. Our soul is naturally compassionate, and that compassion begins with ourselves, and it's sometimes the hardest for us to express that self-compassion. So, when you're compassionate with yourself, you're basically, you know that you have your back. You know that as you are more courageous and bolder in your offerings as you allow yourself to be vulnerable and tender as you keep trying things that perhaps make you nervous you're able to do that more and more because you learn how to surrender to your soul's compassion for you because it is hard to keep being courageous and try new things if you know that you're just going to kind of berate yourself and beat yourself up or not have compassion towards yourself. And the first step is to set the intention. So if you're watching this and you're like, I have no idea how to be self-compassionate, or maybe you've come a long way already, but you know that your soul is guiding you to more, more self-compassion. The first step is just setting that intention. It's just saying, yes, soul, show me, teach me, remind me how I can be, how I can express this deep compassion towards myself, no matter what is happening. So that's the first step. It's always that, that, that intention. And it's also important to know that being compassionate with yourself doesn't mean that you're enabling. It doesn't mean that you're just saying, I can do whatever I want. That's not what it's about. It's that you're always, that what I said earlier, that you have your back, that you know that you're gonna make mistakes, we all do. You know, especially as you're being bolder and, and sharing your creativity with others or um, sharing your medicine in different ways. And that those mistakes are, are learning opportunities and that you can have them and it is normal and courageous and that you're going to tend to yourself with so much love and light as you do that. Hello, Lorenza. So first step, set the intention. Teach me so how to be more compassionate with myself. Wherever you are on this journey, whether you've already feel like you've grown a lot in that or whether you feel like you're just getting started. And then understand that it's a practice and one that you can't take for granted. I've shared a lot about how, you know, I used to be so judgmental of myself, so self-critical. I mean, it was very intense. And throughout all my years of healing, that's gotten a lot better. And I can't take it for granted. You know, like this week I had so much come up. And, and for those of you who are watching it, you know, today's May 15th, 2020. If you're watching it around these days, you know, there's a lot of things going on astrologically. There's a lot of emotion. You might have found this week that you were uh, revisiting old wounds or things that you thought maybe you were done with are coming up again. And it's not because you're going backwards. It's not because there's something wrong with you. It's just an opportunity to heal another layer of it. And for me, the layer that was coming up this week was about making mistakes. And it wasn't like, I mean, there was the fear of making mistakes. I don't want to let people down, but it was more like fear of making mistakes and I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be abandoned if I make a mistake. I'm going to be... I mean, it's not logical, right? It's rarely, these fears rarely are. But it was a really strong feeling, a palpable feeling. And I was 
you know, I wasn't beating myself up about it, but I was trying to get out of it as quickly as I could. <laughs> like it wasn't fun and I was just like trying to use all my tools, right? Self Reiki, um, coaching myself, working with my coach, all of these things I was trying to do. And they were helping to an extent for sure. And then it was like connected to one of my teachers and she was sharing one, some of her personal journey and talk, and, and brought up self-compassion. And right away, it's like I took this breath of relief, like, oh yeah, that's right, self-compassion. You know, I kind of assumed because I wasn't beating myself up, because I wasn't saying those horrendous things I used to say to myself years ago in my mind, I was thinking that I was, I had it all together, like I just needed to figure this out and move on to the next place. And I'd forgotten about self-compassion, which is such a, a beautiful, powerful, strong energy. So I, so I did, you know, it's like I brought my hands to my heart and I was just like, and really what I had to tell myself is like, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for having these emotions that sometimes I don't like for, and, and please understand that it's not even anything that needs to be forgiven. It's not like my soul judges me or the divine judges me, but I was judging me. I had this internal judgment that even if I wasn't conscious of, that I should be over it, that I should be done with it very quickly. I wasn't extending that beautiful self-compassion that my, that I needed, that different parts of me needed. So really just bringing my hands to my heart and saying that and just, and just extending that like deep compassion for my own inner journey and my own vulnerability. So I bring this up to you because compassion, self-compassion in particular can be labeled selfish or weak. And it is, oh my gosh, nothing can be further from the truth. When you are compassionate with yourself, you become this wellspring of compassion for the world. It is impossible for you to be judgmental of others if you're truly having compassion for yourself. Because once you extend that compassion towards yourself, you understand, you see others, and you realize that they're hurting as well. And I'm not talking about being a doormat, but it's really this beautiful process and having self-compassion is so courageous because you don't when you're you can't hide from yourself when you're being compassionate to yourself. Self-compassion is like this beautiful light. And when this light beams on you, you see yourself clearly. And a lot of people and I've been in that place, we're scared of seeing ourselves completely because we're afraid we're not going to like what we see. And yet when we allow that to happen, we all, when we allow our soul to just shine its beautiful light of compassion on us and we see the places that need healing, then the healing can begin, right? Then, then it's like, oh, now we can heal. So, and then of course, from that place, now you've created all this spaciousness inside and you can hear your soul's guidance on how you are meant to lead others. That is why self-compassion and leadership is so intricately, like intricately connected. Like sometimes people think that to be a leader means you're just like always stoic and you're always just, um, you don't, you're not bothered by those feelings or emotions. And there are leaders like that and there is a place for that actually i'll be honest i really feel that the earth is evolving past that type of leadership that what we need is authentic leadership and i don't mean that if you're in leadership you just kind of just are sobbing all day long and you're just kind of um venting your emotions onto the people that you're leading that's not what i'm talking about but it's that you're doing your inner work right that you are being honest with yourself about your hurts and pains and having that doing that inner journey so that then you have the space and you can hear your soul guiding you on how you're meant to share your medicine so um, you know when we do this inner journey that I'll lead you on I really the invitation is gonna be to get to know your soul's compassion 
how does your soul self-compassion feel? You know, once you release the resistance and you say, I'm open to receiving this compassion from my soul, what does it feel like to you? Does it feel like light? Does it feel like refreshing rain? Does it feel like an embrace? Does it feel like spaciousness? Does it feel like a breeze? Like get to know how does your soul's compassion feel? And commit to a practice where you're letting yourself be bathed in that compassion every day. I, when you do that, you will truly step into that courageous, leadership role that you are meant to have and i know if you're watching this you already are a leader this is going this is about moving into that next level of compassion and le next level of leadership so let me just tune in and see if there's anything else to say i guess one last thing One of the things that I have found keeps me the most, can keep me stuck or can keep my clients stuck is when, when they can't make a decision. Now it might look like, you know, I don't know what class to teach or I don't know if I should start a blog or do a Facebook, Facebook Live first or I don't know if I should stay in my job or leave it or, or and as, there's those career, you know, I'm a spiritual career coach, so there's a lot about career and life's purpose. And of course, there's also personal, right? It's all connected. So there could be, you know, relationship questions and decision about that. And some people can really indulge in indecision, just stay in that place of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And Please know that that's different from, you know, there's very much times when our soul is saying, you're, you're figuring it out. You don't need to decide in this moment, you're figuring it out. That is healthy and normal and a soulful message. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the indecision that keeps you stuck. I can't decide. I don't know. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should invest in this person or that person. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And um, it's such a depleting energy and I'm so um, blessed to have found teachers to help me with that and, and that as I work with clients that I can support them in making decisions and one of the most important things in that will allow you to make decisions is to have compassion towards yourself because what's the biggest fear of making the wrong decision? I'm going to make a mistake and I'm going to because of that mistake, I'm going to choose the wrong thing. And then that means that whatever A, B, and C will happen. But really the fear is, and then I'm going to feel horrible about myself. Then I'm going to know that I'm a bad person or I'm a lazy person or so on and so on and so on. So self-compassion allows you, helps you to make the decision and back yourself up on that decision. And if later you realize, wow, you know, it didn't turn out like I wanted it to, but I learned so much, then that's a gift. And I want to say too that self-compassion doesn't mean indulging in victimhood, right? So when we're compassionate with ourselves, it isn't like, oh, I'm so compassionate with myself, those evil people who did that thing to me. It's not, you know, the, if you're feeling any sort of judgment towards somebody else who did something to you, and that's normal. We all do that, you know. We, but when we're truly in self-compassion, we don't we don't even have the desire to go there, to to point fingers at somebody else because we're in the light of our soul, looking at our wounds, healing them, making that having that courageous process, and then we see that other person that we were pointing fingers at, and we recognize like, first of all, they whatever they did. Had, gave me an opportunity to heal this and blessings to you and you know you can cut that cord and have that boundary I don't mean you have to continue in relationship with that person although you might you know depends but you don't have space anymore for that judgment so again wrapping it up self-compassion enhances your leadership that is the type of leadership we need 
and let's go ahead and do our inner journey and um i have my mala beads here with me although i realize the microphone <laughs> this phone is so loud it, it they make a lot of sound so i have my mala beads and on sunday when i do the meditation mantra class we're going to be chanting two mantras Om Mani Padme Hom, which is a mantra of compassion, and Om Tare Tu Tare, Dure Soha, which is a mantra of liberation. So before we begin, let's just, do, we're not going to do 108, but let's just do a couple of the Om Mani Padme Hom mantras, which is all about softening your tender heart, opening your heart to true self-compassion, which is courageous and radical and revolutionary. And so let's do that and then we'll enter, I'll guide you on an inner journey. And we'll see where we go with that. So if you have mala beads, if you happen to have mala beads next to you, you can bring them out. And if not, that's perfectly okay. If you don't know this mantra, that's fine. You can just hear me. And this will be recorded so you can always watch it again and, and do it with the mantra. So... Um, as you get ready, just bring your awareness to your heart, right? Your beautiful heart. And when you chant a mantra, mantra, tool of the mind, you're dissolving resistance. You're dissolving congestion. And right now we're dissolving congestion from this part of your body, clearing blocks to self-compassion. We'll do this a lot more on Sunday Right now, let's just do a few. As we start, Om Mani Padme Hum. 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 Oh money but me home. 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 So just listen to the echoes of the mantra vibrating through your heart center. And in that space inviting your beautiful soul to shine her light over your heart center. So see your soul, and of course your soul is beyond gender, I'm just saying her for now. See your soul in front of you, of course knowing your soul is within you, around you, but see your soul in front of you, beaming this light from your soul into your heart. And as this happens, you're dissolving blocks to self-compassion. You're dissolving fears of being truly compassionate with yourself. You're dissolving fears to truly see yourself and see the way. See, what I'm hearing right now is this beautiful light is shining the light in your heart to any dark spaces that are there. Not dark because you're bad. Just dark because you've had fear of looking at those wounds, of looking at what you consider past mistakes, or even looking at memories where you were dishonored. So this beautiful light of your soul is bringing the light, turning the, the light on dissolving resistance to seeing the truth. But it's the light of compassion so that as you see the truth, harshness dissolves and you have so much compassion for your human journey. So feel that light. And in this space, this beautiful sacred space, asking your soul, beautiful soul, what are you guiding me to look at? Where in my career do I need to extend more compassion? Where in my career do I need to extend more compassion? Where in my career do I need to extend more compassion? And then asking this question, where in my life? Where in my life 
are you guiding me to extend more compassion so that I can step into more leadership? So what area of my life, what relationship, what part of my life are you guiding me to shine this light of compassion so that I can step into more leadership in my career? So notice how it's connected. You can't separate your divine career with your personal life. I mean, there's boundaries, but it's all connected. So ask your soul to shine this light and show you where in your personal life are there areas of st stickiness, areas that you haven't looked at. Let this light of compassion free those spaces which will allow you to step into deeper leadership. So receive that guidance from your soul now. And take deep breaths as you feel this spaciousness in your heart, this spaciousness in your heart as your soul fills you with her compassion and, and, and start to notice, be curious and like, how does my soul's compassion feel? For me, it feels like space. It feels like literally like I'm doing an internal yoga pose and this is opening and stretching and space starts to happen. So feel, be in that exploration. How does my soul's compassion feel? And now as we end this inner journey, I'm hearing this question of, Beautiful soul, who are you guiding me to extend more compassion to? Who are you guiding me to extend more compassion to? Again, who are you guiding me to extend more compassion to? And in this moment, see yourself just sending that light of compassion. It doesn't require you having a conversation with that person or even changing anything about outside behavior. It's right now sending, beaming that light of compassion towards that person. And it might be a group of people. Maybe your soul says, send compassion to people who've really been affected by COVID-19 right now. And, and you don't have any personal people, but it's just like your soul saying, just shine your light towards them. Or maybe it will be very personal. Maybe your soul will say, shine this light on your, you know, your sister, your children, your whatever, your husband, your wife, your partner. Again, your stay in your soul as you do that. Learn the art form of how you can extend compassion and stay in your center. Extend compassion and now go into rescue mode or victim mode. Extend compassion just as is natural part of your medicine. So with deep gratitude, bringing the palms of your hands together in front of your heart, thank your beautiful soul. And I thank you, Lorenza, Cindy, all of you who will be watching this transmission. And we bow to each other in our own heart and we end this inner journey with a namaste namaste everyone all right so i want to just do a little spring of rose quartz i why did i say rose quartz that's really funny rose petals <laughs> i guess rose quartz is here and let me just pull a card for two for you so i'll do the first card is the surrender card so what are you being guided to surrender that will help increase your self-compassion and your compassion with the world? Let's see. We get this one a lot. Surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thank you for sharing and quickly refocus on positive affirmations. So important. So when this happens, when you have those negative thoughts, you know, you can notice them. And it's so interesting because sometimes when we notice negative thoughts, it seems like they get louder, right? You're like, oh my gosh, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And then we get scared of having them and it can be this vicious cycle. So what I find is helpful is when the negative thoughts come, don't resist it. What you resist persists. If you're like, ew, no, no negative thoughts, it's just going to get louder. Instead, notice it. Have compassion for it. Extend that light of compassion for it. And it'll dissolve in the right time. Maybe it'll dissolve like that. Or maybe you'll just notice like, hmm, there's that negative thought. 
but be learn to be with it without drowning in it okay, that is powerful and let's do finally uh, just a gateway oracle card for you what will help you step into that next threshold of self-compassion taking action will I enthusiastically embrace life's boundless possibilities and look at this image it's like he's cro he's taking a leap this is like a quantum leap card so so the reminder with this card is like all this inner work I was just having this conversation with a client earlier it's like all this inner work we do the inner work right and it's easy for a part to come up like, well, I have to heal all this before I share more of my medicine. I have to wait till all of this is healed. That's not, how, we, first of all, we don't have the luxury of that anymore, right? We're 2020, if you haven't noticed, is a very powerful year and it's gonna be a very powerful decade where all of us are being guided to wake up and say yes to our leadership. So as you extend self-compassion, as you have the courage to let your soul shine its light into any dark spaces inside of you, you continue to take action and move forward. And it's okay if it's a little action. Sometimes it's those little steps that create the most momentum. But take action. That's what your soul is saying. Right? It's not like, wait till you're completely self-compassionate. Gosh, if I had done that, I still wouldn't be doing this. If I had said I have to wait till I'm completely healed until I can share my medicine, you wouldn't know me <laughs> because I'd still be, you know, and, and the set, the amazing thing is that in taking action, in sharing my medicine, I am healed so much more quickly and lovingly and deeply. That's the beauty of this work. So a couple of invitations, Sunday mantra meditation, Reiki class, it's going to be an extension of this. We're going to do 108 of the Om Mani Padme Hom mantras and, um, you know, Reiki, it's going to be beautiful. And Thursday will be the virtual career Reiki, all about renewing your medicine, bringing that fresh rain of, of clarity and cleansing onto your medicine. And after that, on the Monday after Memorial Day, I'm going to have a free five-day series where we go over my book, Answering Your Inner Calling in Five Days. Yes, we're going there. I'm super excited about that. My soul said this is what I needed to do. And so if you have my book, have it ready. If you don't have my book, I highly recommend you can order it from Amazon. You can get the Kindle version if you'd rather do that. Because I'm. it's not going to be like I'm reading the book out loud to you. I'm going to be distilling the nuggets, the important parts of the teachings in here, you know, to help you evolve your career to the next level. And that's going to be a free offering, Facebook Live, five days. Would love to see you. And then in June, through the Infinity Foundation, I'm teaching a class on cutting, strengthening and cutting energetic cords. I think that's the name of it. It's going to be over Zoom, June 4th. I'm super excited about that, talking about energy anatomy, your aura, what are cords, what are strands, how do we enhance the ones that we want enhanced, and how do we cut those that once and for all that are depleting and not serving us. So um, you can go to the Infinity Foundation website to sign up for that. If you go to my Facebook page or my website under events, you can read all the details and um, it's just always such a joy to connect with you. It's always so wonderful to be here with you. And I'm, I'm excited about all the offerings that are coming. And I'm excited to see what you will be sharing in the next weeks and months. Because remember, and like nobody else has your soul's medicine. Nobody else has the unique gifts that you have. And self-compassion is absolutely um, essential on this journey of sharing your medicine. And we don't have the luxury anymore of putting, we never did, I honestly don't think we ever did. But now I think many people are feeling that sense of urgency in a good way of like, hey, what am I doing with my life? What am I, not that it's been a waste, but like how, what is my soul saying? It's time to share this, you're ready. Even if you think you're not ready, you're ready. So thank you all of you for being here. It's uh, always a joy and I will talk to you soon. Bye everyone, see ya.